do is kind of get a little bit more into the like evolution aspect of things and draw a little picture. So let me turn off the lights so I can draw a little picture for you. What is the way that science explains how things began in the very, very beginning? The universe began. What's the theory that describes that? Right, the Big Bang Theory. Um, so, boom. And it, a really Big Bang is not the best explanation, but a really an expansion is the best way to describe it. But there was this kind of something, what we call a Big Bang, and out of it, out of that singularity, uh, things began to happen. That was when time began. So time equals zero. And then time marched on from there till we get to where we are now. And so according to science, we start with things, small things like electrons, and then eventually, here we go, there's an atom. <laughs> and then uh, a long time later, there's the earth. And later, there is you. Okay? And time marches on. How long, how much time does science kind of say that the, the age of the universe is? Anybody know the approximate? It's in the billions. I'd say 15 billions-ish. Plus or minus a couple billion years, but who cares? A billion years is not a big deal. So, approximately 15 billion years. The different sources will say anything from like 13 to 20 billion. So, um... So, things that happened a long time. How about the Earth? Does anybody know about how old science says the Earth is? 64 million? Or no, no, no you're thinking of like, uh, what, like the Cambrian period and stuff like that. Or, or even younger than that. We're, we're more talking in like the 4 billion year range. Okay, so about 4 billion. And what happens, the energy of the Big Bang was really high here, and then it went down exponentially over time. And this is one of the ways we can measure the age of the universe. And this energy is called CBR, Cosmic Background Radiation. It's just like radiation, like x-rays, um, microwaves, etc. Those kind of waves, same kind of radiation. But they call it Cosmic Background Radiation. It's the leftover radiation we have right now from when the Big Bang originally happened. Um, now, the problem with this process, especially if you start, start to think about Genesis, and I don't know if you know the Genesis story very well, but it, basically things happened in a week, and there was Adam and Eve, magically as some people say. Well, the question is, well, did this take 15 billion years to get to the first human, say? Or did this take one week? Kind of a big time difference when you, when you get into that category. And for me, I would answer, was it 15 billion years or one week? I would answer that question, yes. And let me say, well, I'll tell you why I would answer that question. But first, by giving you a little problem with this. The problem with this is that we count days uh, essentially, in a basic way, there's different scientific, more accurate ways we do this now. But essentially, the Earth spins once, and that's a day, right? <laughs> Sunrise, sunset, etc. Well, how in science did, are we measuring days if there was no sun before and no Earth before 4 billion years ago? So there's like 11 billion years with none of that going on. Does that make sense? That doesn't mean we can't do it. I'm just tossing out there something to think about. The way we did it is we do it with respect to how time is based right now. Okay? Well, the other problem is in Genesis. On day three, that's when we start to see the earth appear. Well, how the heck was there a first and a second day if there's no earth and no sun? Does it make sense? It's also a weird thing in Genesis. There's answers for that, but just think of the weirdness for the moment. Okay, I think the way to explain this, uh, that I'd like to explain it, is through, uh, and I'll get the lights in a second, is through uh, Einstein and what he was well known for. 
What was Einstein really well known for? Does anybody know? Um, a, lot, a lot of stuff like photoelectric effect is what he okay. wants to be for, but theory of relativity is what most people know, and that's what I was referring to. Right. So, uh, here's how this, let me explain that theory first. The theory of relativity goes like this, and try to track with me a little bit. If you take like Chem 2C or Physics 90, they'll explain things like this. But um, one experiment that they did is they had a jet, and what they did is they had two synchronized clocks. And they took uh, one person had that clock here on Earth, and another person put that clock in a jet, you know, within the jet. What happened? That jet flew around at supersonic speeds. And when that jet landed, what do you think happened to the clocks? They were not synchronized anymore. What happens, according to the theory of relativity, the, one way to explain it, there's many ways to explain it, the faster something goes, so this is what velocity, faster something goes, the slower, from an outside observer, the slower their clock is going, if that makes sense. So as you increase speed, your clock is ticking slower. You don't know it, for everything is normal to you, and naturally happening the same to you. But from an outside pers observer's perspective, that thing is going slower. Does that make sense? To the point, and it, it's so much so that some people even call it the law of relativity, because it's just been over and over again, people have verified it when Einstein just came up with it, you know, with a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, so I think this is a helpful theory for us to think about. So much so that, let's take Keith, for example. Keith. Uh, you know, if we're like the same age, same build, everything the same, however, I put uh, Keith on a spaceship and he flies around and speeds closer to the speed of light and then comes back to Earth, what would Keith notice is thousands of years would have passed or maybe more depending on how fast he was going. Whereas Keith might think, oh, a couple days, maybe, or, or just a little while. That's how much to the extent that this affects us. If you think, if you could be a particle of light and travel, and what's the fastest something can go? Speed of light. The speed of light. That's the, sort of, the universal speed law. That's the fastest something can go. If you could travel at the speed of light, you would notice what would happen to your clock. If you're an, from an outside observer. That clock would go slow, so slow it would actually stop. Now, you would not notice that. But from an outside observer, they would notice that. Such that uh, light is outside of time. And even small things, very small, micro, micro, micro sort of things, are outside of time. And I think that's one, I'm going to get back to the evolution in just a second. But that's one interesting thing analogy we can make with modern science is that it has interesting analogies to theology in that we describe God or God describes himself as light the light of the world etc so that that makes sense why God can know past present and future as if there's no big deal because we have a scientific interesting analogy to it not that they're the same or God is a photon or something like that but that we have an interesting scientific analogy that it's not that unheard of that something can know past, present, and future. Light can do that if light had a mind and that sort of thing. 